Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronix Fix again. Today we're going to be replacing the thermal paste on an Xbox One S. Okay, this is the motherboard out of our brand new Xbox One S. We actually haven't even started it up to play anything yet. We just tore it right apart as soon as we got it. So uh, this is the APU chip. As most of you probably know, it's the GPU and CPU put together into one chip. And thermal paste goes here and that uh, also connects right here on the heat sink and that is what transfers the heat from the APU onto the heat sink. Um, that's what gives a good connection is this thermal paste. Now, if you'll notice, I'll get you a good view of it here. This thermal paste here is actually pretty dried out already and this, uh, the sad thing about it is we haven't even, like I said, we haven't even used it yet and it's just, uh, here, let me show you. It's just dry and so, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it works. It'll work fine for quite a while. You know, I mean, uh, thermal paste works quite a while, even even at this dry. But uh, we're definitely going to replace it, uh, especially since we already have it apart. So the first thing we're going to do is we do need to clean all the old thermal paste off. So I'm going to go ahead and and get it off of the heat sink first. And what I'm using is just a Q-tip. Uh, what I like to do is remove as much as I can with a dry q-tip off of both the heat sink and then also the chip. Let's get it all off as much as we can and then when it when we go to uh, put the new or when we go with a wet q-tip then most of it's already off so the wet q-tip will actually do a lot better cleaning. Okay, I'll get you a good view of the chip there. And just says Xbox One right on it there. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and get um, some, I use uh, this little blue bottle. Um, you just press down on the top and it, and it pushes out some um, isopropyl alcohol. I use 99%, but you can even use you know, rubbing alcohol that you have around the house. Just make sure it's good and dry when you're done. So we just take and clean it really well, rub over it several times, and then take the dry side of the Q-tip and go back over it and dry it off. And just make sure it's nice and dry and clean. And if it's not quite all the way dry, just blow on a little bit, that'll get it to dry out the rest of the way. So that's what you want it to look like, a nice, uh, nice clean, dry surface, and that's gonna just help the new thermal paste to stick well. So what we use is Arctic Silver 5. It's a good, it's a good thermal paste. It doesn't cost a ton of money, but it's still good quality. So I'll show you what I do. I just put, um, you don't have to put a ton on. That amount is actually probably uh, plenty, but it really doesn't matter that much because um, once you once you put this is going to go right here, and once you clamp that down, this thermal paste is just going to spread out to a really thin layer on there. So it doesn't really matter too much uh, the amount. You don't want to get a ton of it on there, and you don't want just a teeny bit. You want to make sure that can spread over that whole part of the chip right there. So now what we, what we want to do is line up this connector with the connector on the motherboard right here and line up the four mounts right here with the motherboard. So they're going to go through like that and then I'm going to connect this right now before I forget so that's all connected correctly. I'm going to turn it over. We have to remember to put the clamp on right here and there's no specific orientation for this. It doesn't matter if it's like this or like this. We just got to make sure it's on there and clamp down all the way. So for this, what you want to do is get it all lined up like that. And then I use like a flathead screwdriver sometimes to make sure that's all the way down there. So those two are on. Now that one I just press down and this one we should be able to just press down as well and there now it's on so these are all on correctly now there's a little groove in 
I don't know if you can see it. There's a little groove in the green pegs that stick through there and this clamp has to match up with the grooves and snap on. So if the clamp is loose or if you can pull it off, that's not how it should be. It needs to be snapped into those grooves. Now that we have the fan and the heat sink on the motherboard correctly, we need to go ahead and pull out the bottom case. There's gonna be locating tabs. There's one there and one here specifically. And then we also need to angle it in towards the back because all of these ports right here, all along here, they have to be moved, they have to fit inside all the holes right here. So we're gonna angle it back in like this and go down here slowly like that. And then there's a locating tab right here, right on the end down here that likes to stick or that likes to not line up correctly. So we gotta make sure this is all in here, how it should. And then that just snapped down in place as you heard probably. So then the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and these four screws need to go in. Uh, they're marked A1, A2, A3, and A4, but it doesn't really matter which order you go in. And they're gonna be these uh, pan head, uh, they're like a T9 or a T10, either, either one should work. And in some of my other videos, I think I said they're security torques, but they're not actually security torques, they're just regular torques, torque screws, so. You don't actually need the security bit for most of the Xbox One S. There's two, so then we got two more to put in. As you can see, I use this electric screwdriver. It doesn't have a ton of torque on it, so what I do is just I tighten it until the, screw, the screwdriver starts kind of loading down like you can hear, and then I call that good. So there we go. So now our motherboard is mounted back into the bottom case correctly. So the next thing we're gonna do is these larger silver screws go in here and go in over here. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in next. And then the other one goes right up here. It's actually marked, there's a B1 and a B2 right here. So that fully mounts the motherboard into the bottom case right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding the rest of the components that hook onto the motherboard before we add, add the rest of the case components. Now that we have the fan in there, the fan is actually marked with a O1 on it. And so we actually, uh, Microsoft makes this really easy because then we just go through and add the other components in order. So the next thing is going to be the disk drive. It's marked O2 right there. And so we have to put this in. Now this one has got this plastic piece that needs to go on here. And I believe it goes on like this. These wires go through like this. And then you have to make sure they pull out and then this uh, metal piece needs to slip in right here, as you can see. So we gotta get that inserted fully. And it's not quite in there all the way. There we go, so now that's in there all the way and we have this one black screw that goes right on there just to keep that on there all the way. So we're gonna just go ahead and tighten that down. There we go. So now this black piece is back on the disk drive, how it should be. Now we're gonna mount the disk drive in. One thing you have to be careful with when mounting the disk drive is these, uh, these mesh, um, I don't know, there are some sort of metal mesh strips that need to go between the case and the disk drive. So now that that's on there correctly, there's also a locating pin back here, two locating pins, and once those mount in there and sit flush, then you know that the disk drive is connected or is inserted correctly. 
So the next thing we're gonna do is just make sure that the cables are connected back onto the motherboard. And these ones, super easy, they just push right in. Just make sure they're lined up correctly and then they push in right there. Next, it looks like the next thing is the power supply. We got a O3 right on it. Makes it really easy to know which one goes in next. So we're gonna take the power um, supply connector and we're gonna connect it down here first. We're gonna actually gonna hold it up like this just to give us a little more slack to make it easy to connect. And that just pushes down on there. And then we got a locating pin here and then you can see there's two places where screws go. This locating pin actually looks like a screw hole and not necessarily just a locating pin. So we're gonna flip this back down and see if we can get it on here correctly. Okay. It's kind of tricky. There's a couple capacitors down there that are kind of right in the way of one of those um, those screw holes. And so it's kind of tricky getting it down on there, but uh, you can kind of leverage uh, your way down on there. And then we have to make sure these are all matched up, these screw holes. So what I'm gonna do is just take a look from behind and see if they're all matched up how they should be. And they appear to be. You can see that the power supply connector is right about where it should be. So we're gonna call that good. Make sure the disk drive stays where it's supposed to be. Okay, everything feels pretty good in here. Um, the power supply, if you wiggle it around too much, it can come kind of dislodged, it feels like. So you need to just be careful and put that on there correctly and just kind of don't move it around too much. The next thing, HDD04. So we're gonna put the hard drive in. And it's the same thing, we got a locating pin here and a locating pin here. So you need to make sure that this is oriented correctly. The cables need to be facing this side of the console. And so what we're gonna do is connect these cables first. The connections are right here and right here. So we need to make sure these are connected first before we lower this down onto the motherboard. So that one's connected and that one's connected. And now we just take it and lower it down onto the locating tabs until it's down on there correctly and fully and it feels like it is. So one of the harder things about this one versus the Xbox One is all these pieces are just loose in there right now. And so what you have to be careful of is either flipping it over or up on its side and so you can get the screws in there um, without all this stuff falling out. So that's something we gotta be careful of here. I am gonna go ahead and insert this as well. This one, if you remember from the teardown, it goes right in the front here. So it just kind of lowers down. There's two locating tabs right there that lower down into the slots. So um, this probably actually doesn't have to be done now um, because these are for the long screws. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do it now so I don't forget. So now the tricky part, we're actually gonna lower it. I'm gonna flip it over like this and leave my hand under it while I get some of these other screws in here. And I can already see that the uh, power supply kind of uh, moved a little bit. There's locating pins right here. So now that I've got that on there where it should be, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this screw up. Okay, that one's tighter. I'm gonna tighten this one up. Oh, that one's a long one, so that won't work. So it looks like this one We'll go next, the C3 screw. Okay, that one's on there. Now, the disk drive, those, uh, that's a long screw. Looks like we need to do uh, the C screws. I'm gonna pull this one over, because there is a screw there, but it, isn't quite lined up correctly. So I'm gonna actually wait on that one. Let's do C2 over here. 
another part of the power supply. And I'm not going to tighten these all the way up. I just want to get enough of these on here so things don't fall out so I can flip it over and make sure everything else is lined up correctly. So it looks like we got C4 and C5 over here. And that once again, these are the large silver screws. And we can get C5 on there easily. Um, C4 is a little bit um, crooked, so I wanna see what that is. It looks like the hard drive. So I need to make sure everything is correct with the hard drive. I'm just gonna adjust the hard drive in here just a little bit until everything is where it should be. And then I'm gonna put that screw in. There we go, you heard it, you heard it snap in place. Um, it looks like that was just uh, one of the locating pins getting in there correctly. So um, now we're gonna go ahead and put this C4 in. So all of these, all the rest of the silver screws are the C screws under here. And now I'm gonna tighten them up. Okay, these are actually fairly tight already. This one needs to be tightened all the way. That one's tight. Okay, so those are all tight. So now, all of this stuff is nice and tight in here. It's not gonna fall off and it's good to go. Okay, now, this is the first time I've assembled this and I noticed that I forgot something. There's a little, uh, a little tab that goes right here where the disk drive goes. This needs to go in there first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these screws out for the disk drive and we're gonna put that in there. It really probably doesn't matter too much, but I do like to make sure everything is in that I've taken off. So I am gonna go ahead and remove the disk drive to do that. And it looks like that is C5, B1, and C3. Okay, and this one was C3, so I'm gonna move these screws over here. And now, flip it up here, and I'll turn it around so you guys can see this. You don't need to even pull that out all the way, just enough to get this in. And there we go. You can see that little clip goes right there. So now we can just lower this back down where it goes. And you can see from the back, there's locating tabs. So you just need to make sure those locating tabs are lined up correctly. Feels like that one's not, but it actually is, so. Okay, and then we're gonna go back, put B1 back. And then we need to do C3 over here. And then we need to do C5. So these ones I just kind of get started with my fingers a little bit and then go ahead and finish up with my electric screwdriver. Looks like we're getting some of this dried thermal paste on it. We don't want that. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I just don't like having it on there. Okay. So now that's on there. Everything looks good. We haven't forgotten anything now. So we've got everything in there that we need. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna put these guys back on right here. 
One goes on the side right here, and one goes right on the front right here. So this one right here, it's gonna go right there. We gotta make sure it's pushed in all the way. And then we've got four of the black kind of pan head style screws that go on here. Trying to make sure these are lined up. That one wasn't lined up correctly, so it was just kind of spinning on the metal. But we got it lined up. And that one's on. And then we'll take this one. That one's on. And then this one. Okay, there we go. Now we just need to put this guy right on here. And then we just got the last three of the pan head style screws. I'm gonna get all three of them started and then we'll just tighten them up all at once. Okay, now they're all started. I'll just tighten them up. Okay, and there we have it. Everything's in, everything's ready to go. Okay, now everything is on there how it should be. We've got these guys on, that one, and that one back on. All the, the insides are tightened up. So now we gotta put the top plate on. So we need to make sure it is lined up correctly. Nothing too special about this part. Make sure it's all lined up. The uh, metal mesh that's on this right here, the grounding mesh you need to make sure is pushed back so this can lay fully flat on there. So we've got all that. Make sure it's all pushed down how it should. Now that we have this on, we need to go ahead and put the top plastic case on. So what we need to do is make sure, I'm gonna show you guys the tabs that need to line up. There's a groove right in here that needs to line up with this groove right here. So what we're gonna do is put this back here like this and then I'm gonna lower this top piece on the front and then got a piece of hair in there, we don't want that. So then we need to make sure these grooves line up Okay, the grooves all lined up correctly. The top, the front looks good. So now we're gonna flip it over. And now we gotta put the green screws in. So these guys are next. And these are all the F screws. So they all, uh, except for, yeah, they all have Fs on them. So F1, F2, F3, F5, F6, F4. So those are all these green screws. Now there is one extra hole on the front here that doesn't have anything, uh, that doesn't take one of them. So you got enough, not let that trick you. Now it's all uh, tightened down, everything looks good. Now we're ready for the bottom case. So this bottom piece needs to go on 
And you'll want to just look around your work area and make sure there's no extra pieces or screws, uh, which we don't have any. Now we need to make sure this is also oriented correctly. You'll see this back piece with the hole in it right here. That's going to go where the warranty sticker was, which is on the back right here. So that's an easy way to orient it. So that means this one's going to go like this. And this, since it's just uh, plastic snaps, we should be able to just snap it in place. And if I remember right, we may need to snap the front down first. There's that part. Okay, everything snapped in place. It all looks good. Make sure all the ports are lined up in the back, which they are. And there we have it. The Xbox One S is back together. Thanks so much for watching our Xbox One S thermal paste replacement guide. And keep watching our channel. The next one we're gonna do is gonna be uh, taking apart the Xbox One controller, the Xbox One S controller. We're gonna have a disassembly guide for this. Uh, so keep an eye on our channel and we should be uploading that soon. Thanks a lot for subscribing and watching and we'll see you next time.